In the previous two videos, we explored how to set up RLS on field parameters to limit the options in the field parameter slicer on the report page. And we also learned how to group field parameters to make it easier for our report consumers to select one based on how they want to analyze the data. After fooling around with field parameters for a bit now, in this video, I'm going to show you how to do both dynamically. I mean, to get the source table name added automatically to the field parameter, even if you use DEX code to modify it and not the GUI. And also, how to set up the dynamic RLS on our parameter table. Let's roll the intro. Hello and welcome to Bilingual Analytics. My name is Roland and I'm here to help you to learn more about Power BI. If this is your first time around here, then please start by clicking on the like and subscribe buttons so you wouldn't miss my Power BI tutorials and shorts. It means a lot to me and helps others to find content like this. Thank you. First of all, if you missed the previous videos on field parameter grouping and RLS on the parameter table, make sure to start with those as I'm not going to repeat the basics in this video. Let's jump straight into Power BI as we have quite a few things to cover today. Let's say that you want to bring in the name of the table from which the parameter is coming from to create a grouped slicer view. It would help your report users to know the source of that field. Also, we are going to use the field to dynamically set row level security. So what can you do? Head over to the data view and select the parameter table. As I showed you before, you can start adding the table names to the end of the DEX code, but it is not super efficient. Additionally, if you or any other developers decide to add more fields to this field parameter, they have to manually fill in that detail as well, making the whole report maintenance more difficult. So this time around, instead of typing in the table names, I'm going to use the new column button. Instead of just copy pasting the DAX code that I came up with, let's build it up together. These are the times when I'm happy to come to Power BI from the business side with lots of Excel experience, and you will see why. Let's call this new column dynamic group, and I know that I want to show the text that sits between those apostrophes. But what's the best way to extract that info? Well, whether it is the best or not, we can debate in the comments below, but one easy way to do that is by using a left and a search function. I want to grab the text from the left of the field parameter fields column until the second apostrophe. Start with the left of the field and then search for that symbol from the second character. This will give us the table, but it still has those apostrophes. While it wouldn't cause any trouble, purely from the UI perspective, it would look ugly. So let me spice up the text with a substitute really quickly. And we are good to go. With that done, I can jump back to the canvas and add this new field to the slicer. And the best part is that this field is now based on a formula, so auto-generated even if I add the new field to my parameter table. Let's try with the brand field from the product table. Looking good so far. The first step is ready. We have the source tables name flagged in the parameter table. Now we can start working on the dynamic RLS. Let's say that my RLS logic is the following. Marketing team members are allowed to see parameters from the product table. Sales team members are allowed to see fields from the customer table, while others are allowed to see everything else except these two tables. Your scenario might be different, or you might want to set up RLS based on a security table that I showed in this RLS video. In this demo, I just wanted to spark your imagination about what's possible once you grab the source table's name. Let's jump back to Power BI Desktop. Head over to Modeling and Manage Roles under Security Settings. Create the first role for the marketing team members. Security is based on the parameter table and the dynamic group field. Create the second role for the sales team. And lastly, the third role for everyone else. It's time to test these roles. Oh, 
all of the security rules seems to work as expected. Great stuff. I love how field parameters work. Every day I find new ways to utilize them in my reporting suite. This is just another way to get some funky stuff out of them and make my life easier by helping my users to find insights quicker, easier, and just in general, to provide a much better user experience for them in my reports. It's time for me to ask the question of the day. Are you already using field parameters? Do you like them or love them? Let me know in the comments below along with any other questions that you have about them. Thanks for tuning in today. I hope that you learned something new and interesting from today's video and you will be able to implement this for your report. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons before you leave or before you watch one from the above videos. Until the next one, see ya!